and the key thing is there, there is a lot you can do. So I, I guess I would think about there are things that we can help you with, but it has to be driven by you. So we would talk about some of the medications that we would do to help you. And we've, I think we've touched on those, those anti-stickiness medications, blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes. The first thing is compliance. It's important that you take the medication regularly. Um, the second thing is keeping an eye on how you're monitoring those vascular risk factors. So I often tell patients to buy a blood pressure monitor. So you can buy them. I, I would typically go for a British Hypertension Society, a BHS approved one. Uh, and then monitor your blood pressure. So what I often say to patients is, why don't you do it three times a day for two weeks and see what it is? Because often patients will say to me, look, I've gone to my GP and it's always high when I go and see a doctor. So, so you can easily remedy that by doing it at home, checking it, and then you show your GP, look, this is my recordings. And if they're consistently above 130 over 80, there are lifestyle things to do. So that's lower salt intake, taking lots of fruit and vegetables, doing regular exercise, and then you might need medications as well. And most people need a bit of both. Diet. The, the type of diet we say to focus on is a more Mediterranean style diet. Your five a day, for example, less saturated fats, cutting down on red meat, alcohol. We know it's been a big risk factor. Uh, and, and often patients will say to me, well, the doctor said I should have a red wine every day. And, and that's true, probably a little bit of alcohol, the polyphenols in red wine, in, 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 in a measured content uh, as per the guidelines, so maybe about 14 units per week for men and 10 units a week for women, uh, uh, probably uh, a reasonable amount to go for, but actually many people are well in excess of that and that's not good. And that can contribute to vascular risk. We know that's so a cutting down on alcohol. Good outdoor exercise, that's important. Building up the rest of your tone. Uh, it's important both mentally and physically. Uh, and so there's lots that one can do. Um, and they're all about targeting these vascular risk factors. The other risk factor that's less well known about is obstructive sleep apnea. We're learning more about this in its relation to vascular health. So what on earth is that? So I guess you might not know you have it, but the signs might be a morning headache, feeling tired in the day, having to have an afternoon nap, your partner nudging you and saying, look, you're snoring all the time, have periods where you stop breathing, <gasps> At night, you're not aware of that. And that might be a sign that you have obstructive sleep apnea. And that can contribute to high blood pressure and contribute to your vascular risk. So if your partner is saying you're having those symptoms, then it might be worth seeing your GP because there are tests that you can do to look for that. And there's breathing machines that you can have at night, relatively non-invasive, that can help with that as well.